Hello, everyone, and welcome to the webinar for um, project or the um, new Microsoft uh, project management reimagined. Um, I will we'll try to walk you through today um, through the new uh, changes that Microsoft has uh, introduced uh, to um, the Microsoft project management uh, offering or solution uh, they offer through different applications. I might uh, just ask that people who are on the call just to uh, use the go to the meeting interface and uh, uh, raise your hand as in click on the icon that you can raise your hand so I can know that you can hear, hear me. All right, please. All right, so I think that everyone is, can hear me well. I'll start sharing my screen and uh, we'll take it from there. Uh, how do I share my screen? There we go. Uh, sharing screen. Okay, so before I actually get uh, start demoing of the product, I'll just probably show you a, a bit of an architecture. I mean, if you want to call it an architecture, but a bit of a picture that shows the um, what is this new uh, um, basically uh, uh, offering or product from Microsoft is all about. So people are familiar, and I'm, I'm going to show you this today, familiar with the Microsoft project on the desktop. This is kind of a, 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 the, the, the right hand bottom corner of my diagram is project on the desktop. So that's been, you know, uh, available since the late 1980s, really. Um, but it's your scheduling, you know, Gantt chart application. And then Microsoft produced in the early 2000s what's so called then Project Center or what then called Project Server, and then moved to the cloud and now called Project Online, which is a, um, if you'd like, a project portfolio management application. So not a singular kind of project uh, aspect or concept, but it's a multiple project management portfolio, um, including the schedules. Um, but introduce things like risks and issues and documents, uh, project governance and the workflow, how a project moves from one place to the other, and so on, the other aspects of managing projects in a portfolio. Now, that project online does have a, a schedule page where you would be able to uh, interact with the GAN chart or the schedule of the project in project online itself. So then we have then two interfaces for the schedule, one via project online, via the browser, and the good old project professional on the desktop. Now, um, Microsoft have just introduced a new third one called Project for the Web, which is sitting here. And Project for the Web is nothing but another scheduling application to manage tasks and dependencies and so on. Uh, now, why this is uh, important and not just another addition that is just going to make things more confusing, it is important because it's built on a new platform that Microsoft called the Power Platform. And the Power Platform is made from uh, applications, uh, the applications Power Apps, Power Automate, used to be called uh, Flow, and Power BI. Now, the Power Platform is built on a, um, a, 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 a platform or a component called the Common Data Service, uh, CDS. Common Data Service is a, is a, is a, a component that um, a, a client or an organization can utilize to really have a one source of truth, um, uh, uh, if you'd like, data uh, uh, area, where the data can then be uh, uh, brought from different applications, like a Microsoft set of application, if organization use planners, team, to do, Azure boards, whatever your Office 365 or non Office 365, any Microsoft applications, even Project Online and SharePoint, can then the data from these can be then integrated and sent to the CDS, the Common Data Service. Non Microsoft application like ASP, uh, SAP, Oracle, Jira, ServiceNow, you name it. Uh, most of the applications, the you know the big applications, the other vendors now have gateways and connectors to the CDS, so they can bring data from there and put it in this one location called the CDS. 
Um, now, obviously, the first benefit you get from getting the data from all of those Microsoft and non-Microsoft applications is visibility. So you can report using application like Power BI, or in fact, if you are using still applications like SQL reporting services, or not Microsoft, like a Tableau type of application, the reporting will be available for the users, um, the different stakeholders and users across all data sources in the organization from all of the applications, Microsoft and Microsoft, via this common data service. But not only that, so this adds the to the story that the visibility is just one obvious benefit. The other benefits, if I take the Power Apps, for example, is the ability to build user interfaces or apps uh, that are available on the web, on the tablet, or on the phone to perform actions um, within the CDS itself and calling actions on other applications. Just a simple example, let's say when a new project is created in Project Online uh, and the data is stored here, and then the status of it been updated by Project Online workflow engine from let's say pending to approved, the common data service to a Power Apps uh, um, platform can call SAP and create a project ID in the SAP platform. Um, so that's also uh, one of the benefits is the integration uh, of the um, applications in a in a common place where actions can be performed in these applications uh, via other uh, kind of events. Um, and then the ability to have the interfaces that we're talking about here, the, the Power Apps interfaces, to be literally customized to each client the way they want it. So let's say a client wants to have a different time sheeting um, kind of functionality than the one available on SAP or Project Online, and either combines the, the two applications, as in when someone fills a time sheet, it goes both Project Online and SAP, you can develop an app that again will be available on the ta on your tablets and phones and and, and laptops or, and or desktops, and will be customized exactly the way you want it with the organization logo and everything, and will be sending data to the CDS and perhaps uh, performing functions on Project Online and the and SAP. So that's the Power Platform. Now this new um, project for the web is available or is built on the common data service. So no integration required. It is actually built as a as an app, if you would like to call it an app, on the common data service. So today's demo, I'm going to start from the beginning, just show you quickly how Project Desktop looked like and what Project Online looked like and the schedule there, and then mainly spend the time on the project for the web. So let's start from the beginning, Project for the um, Project Professional. So if I go and open Project Professional. This is the good old uh, Microsoft Project Professional. You can start creating your schedule here. Um, you can, um, I don't know, start from a template. Might as well start from a template. So file new. Just quickly, I mean, this is not a, a, a project, a Microsoft Project Desktop demonstration at all, just to make sure that you, we understand the differences. So that's the first one. I'm going to leave it to that. Most people are familiar with Microsoft Project the Desktop, but these are the functions. It has tasks, it has dependency, duration, effort, assignment of resources, and all of the things that we know. So that's the first one on my diagram there, Microsoft Project for the Desktop. And then we go for Microsoft Project Online. And Microsoft Project Online is this interface here. And it's the interface is SharePoint, by the way. Um, so Project Online, the user interface, Project Online uh, as an application does not have a user interface. The user interface is SharePoint. So when you go to SharePoint page and you have Project Online access to uh, through it, um, you go to place like, you know, for example, projects and you click on a certain project and you drill in. Again, people who are familiar with Project Online will understand what this is and uh, how it operates. But I'm going to click on a, a project, but I'll show you an equivalent schedule engine that is available in Project Online. Um, it's, uh, that is equivalent to Project the Desktop, this one here, for example. So as you can see, similar interface, similar experience to Project the Desktop. You can manage a schedule um, and then, you know, duration, start, finish, and so on. So Project Online is does also have a scheduling capability. Obviously, Project Online is much bigger than this just scheduling capability. You can do many other things. You can manage resources across your project, do cost estimation, manage risks and issue, do project governance, store documents and the alike. Um, 
but the scheduling component of it is quite similar to the one on the desktop. In fact, you can open the same project that is a stored in project online by a project desktop. So I can go to my project desktop, I've got file open, and I can point it to the URL where my project online SharePoint site is, go browse and literally open the same exact project as you can see here in project desktop. So I'll have um, project desktop and the project online uh, uh, page available to interact with the same exact schedule. So this is the schedule here um, via project desktop and there you'll see the same exact schedule as the via project online SharePoint page. So that was the case till probably a month ago and then Microsoft went and introduced this new thing. So project for the web is a new thing. Um, before I get into project of the web, Microsoft uh, through Office 365 also introduced something called uh, project home. Uh, project home is really, as the name suggests, is the home for all projects that are managed within the Microsoft um, uh, applications echo system. So whether you're managing a project via project online or via the new thing called project for the web, in fact, you can even introduce things um, if you are a kind of a an, a, an agile shop and you use uh, Azure DevOps or Azure boards, you can also bring projects from Azure DevOps and Azure boards. But let's just stick to our project uh, kind of projects. Um, so as you can see here from the project homepage, you can, by the way, you know, point and, at a certain project and say, this is a favorite project of mine. It will bring it as a tile here. But I don't know if you can notice, I might zoom in a bit here. You can see there's a bit of difference between the two icon here. Like one is with a bit of more bars inside than the other. So, and as you can see, the type here, it says PWA project or project. So PWA project is a project online project, while project without PWA is the new project for the web project. I know it can be confusing, but just bear with me. So if I go create a new project, you will see I will have a third interface now for managing my schedule on my Gantt chart. Not like project the desktop, not like the kind of the web page that we've seen in Project Online, this is Project for the Web. I might zoom out a bit now. You will see that it's very slick, it's very um, modern feel to it. You start by, you know, if you want to give your project a name, so let's say this is a project, oh, I don't know, let's say this is a CRM implementation project. Simply, and if I can spell, oh, no. Whatever. Um, too many LEs. Um, so that's the CRM implementation project. You can give it a start, a very basic information, and that's it. And you will also notice, uh, sorry, I need to zoom out a bit. So my uh, go to meeting buys on top of this, so I'll just have to, yep, there we go, close. Um, you will also notice that. Um, the first thing that you, uh, there's no save, there's no publish. You know, as you go and interact with your project schedule, things are being saved. So again, if we go to the task, uh, let's do a bit of I don't know some discovery, our work task, and then we'll do some planning, and then we'll do some design, and then we'll do some build, and we'll do tests and deploy. Some very basic. And then someone goes, well, in the build, I want to insert tasks and, you know, the whole idea of subtasks and so on. You click on the three and you go, look, I'm going to insert a task key. And under build, I'll have the, I don't know, um, base build. And then I'm, I'm, I'm add another task key. And I'll go, this is, uh, I don't know, um, bug fixing something. And then you can start having those tasks indented against the what, what we used to go call a, um, uh, a a phase. But then as you go here, you can see here that I have now build made of two subtasks effectively. You can start assigning to people, but I'll get to that in a minute. Um, and then you put durations. So again, the same kind of one week of discovery um, and one week of planning and so on. So I'll leave that to that. One design is two days. Um, and the base build is going to take us 10 days, while the debugging will going to take us four days. Things. Uh, we'll test this for two days and we'll deploy for five days. Obviously, you can have milestones, so end of project. I'll put there end of project. 
and I'll put a zero duration a milestone. So before I get uh, uh, continue on this, you'll notice that we have three tabs now, three views. The grid, which is this view here, and the grid is supposed to uh, mimic or give you an, a, a feel of an Excel, a grid effectively. You can add columns to your grid. Um, however, you cannot add columns that are that you create. So currently, the version that we have for Microsoft, whether this is going to change or not in the future, I really don't know yet. Um, but you'll have, you know, you can add things that are already available that Microsoft has already uh, put into that the, the, this new software application. So if you want to see the finish, the start and finish dates, for example, so we'll put start as a column and we'll put finish as another column. Um, if you want to go and say, oh, look, I want to see the percentage complete uh, on, the, on, the, on this grid as well. So it's a very simple grid with uh, some basic columns. So that's what's called, called the grid view. And then you have, I'm going to uh, jump the board view and go to the timeline just to quickly show you this and then go back to the board view and go to the timeline. And timeline is what we used to know or, 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 or uh, see as the Gantt chart. So it's very visual. Uh, as you can see here, the bars are available there for us. Um, but also what we could do is we can start creating dependencies. So I literally point, very visual point between this task and this task and literally create a dependency. Very easy to interact with, very visual, very slick in terms of the user experience. You can zoom in and zoom out. It's basically um, a much, much better um, user experience, the interface. Um, so look, and I'm gonna make basically just make basic, oops, go, uh, basic dependencies here. Just I can zoom out a bit more if I I need more kind of. Oh, there we go. Um, you, you can increase duration by the way. I can go here and increase duration as well. But it's very simple, a slick way to manage our Gantt chart. Now obviously it does not have all those advanced functionality that. Uh, you know, Project Desktop, or in fact, the uh, Project Online version of managing a schedule. Uh, there's no baseline. Uh, there is no, um, um, uh, you know, a critical uh, path and all of those kind of advanced uh, scheduling applications. So really, if, if you're talking about Project for the Web, if, if you are a, your project management or schedule management requirements are quite, I wouldn't call them basic, but I, I I'll call them the, uh, the most used ones, then it's good for you. If not, then you might consider other scheduling engines. Um, now I'll go to the board, I promise you at the end, but I'll just need to jump up to the grid and show you that what's the assignment to users look like. So how do we assign people, resources to different tasks? Um, so uh, uh, people who are familiar with Project Online will, will, will remember they build team kind of experience. You don't have to do that anymore. The resources or the people that you can assign to your project using the project for the web um, will come from what's so-called group, Office 365, a group uh, membership. So by default, uh, every project you create can either be linked to an existing Office 365 group or you create a new group for it. But you don't have to, if you create it, want, want to create a group, you don't have to go and you know, manually create a group and start assigning people to it. You can still you can do it right away. Unless you want to assign to an existing group, you can start typing people's name here. So I'll show you how we go about um, uh, changing the group if you have an existing group. So you go group, and instead of create a new group, you go, no, add to an existing group, and you choose a group that you already have i.e. you have a group of people that will work on this project, you can go, and the reason you add them, not because you want to bring them so you can assign them to those tasks, is the other functionality that this will give you. So if the same group have a team on Teams or a plan on Planner, they will start seeing these things all into the one group. They will have the same security and you'd have, you don't have to worry about it on these other applications. So you basically bring an existing group and assign it to your project. Or as I said, you create a group and you don't even have to create it from here. So, and then you start thinking, okay, who do I want to assign to the discovery phase? Uh, I'll probably see if Peter is, at, well, I want to assign Peter Williams on it. And if I go Peter and search, uh, searching, 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 shouldn't take that long. Uh, I don't know, let's try Dan. Well, that's a bit embarrassing. It doesn't take that long at all, usually, but um, let's give it some time. Um, but the idea, if this worked, and it usually does, um, that you really don't have to build a team. It will basically, there we go. So 
it found down for me and I click on it, all it will say, say, by the way, I'm going to now create a group for you because Dan, uh, you, you are uh, selecting your uh, person to work on the task. I'm going to create a group called CRM implementation. I'm going to add Dan to it. You okay for that? Yep, yeah, I'm okay for that. Create the group called uh, CRM implementation and so on. So, you know, you want Peter to work on this task. You go search for Peter and assign Peter to it. It will say, say the same thing. I'm going to add Peter to the group and assign them to this task. He is fine. And so on. Um, and oh, I didn't didn't work for Peter for some reason. Uh, there we go. Peter, yes, assign a task. There we go. And you, and you can assign more than one person, by the way. So Dan again and Late here and so on. Uh, I don't know, there's something with Peter that is not working, but let's um, I don't know, start looking for someone else. Stuart, for example. There you go, add, assign an ad, and so on. So I'll leave that for that. Um, you can also click on the information button next to the task and have a start and finish, obviously, but also update the percentage complete. And you can do a bit of effort um, calculations. It's very basic, but basically it does not come from the um, assignment. So again, people who are familiar with Project the Desktop, you do not uh, multiply the assignment of the resource by the duration and get some of that. It doesn't does the it, uh, reduce the calculation the the duration as Microsoft Project Desktop when you assign more people. So it's effort driven. Uh, we know that they are uh, changing this or will give us the option to change that. Uh, but for now, let's just go with the effort being calculated as you want it. So what's completed, what's remaining, and what's the total? Um, the total is calculated. So you go look what's the remaining. Well, the entire you know, thing will take us um, 80 hours, and that's still remaining. Nothing is, is completed, really. Um, and that will change your duration here for you. Same with the planning task that I have here. I can say, look, the, the remaining is not 140 hours. It is, um, uh, what was it like? Uh, I can't remember now. Let's say it's two weeks. So that was, what's that? That's uh, uh, 80 uh, hours. Um, well, not times the three, which is 80 times the three, whatever that is, uh, 340 hours no my calculations suck but anyway so you basically calculate the effort based on how many resources the resources are always assigned 100 percent so that's it really you can create dependencies by the way from here as well you don't have to use the visual so you go oh God, i'm going to create a a, a a dependency from the ribbon itself and so on now before I get carry on, actually, I'll 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 just make some um, uh, progress on the task and say this is a 50 50 percent or 100 percent or whatever. So you can type it in, or you can um, uh, on the task, or you can basically um, uh, open a, a pane that is uh, the task information and change it here. Doesn't matter, same thing. So I'm going to go 25 percent on this and so on. And there's a nice visual here. In fact, if the if your dates are in the past and you haven't finished it, it will turn it into red, as in you are behind schedule and so on. But then I will introduce you to something called buckets, and this is the board, uh, the board's experience that is quite new. So by default, it it created a um, uh, basically uh, 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 tickets, if you'd like to call it a ticket view. Uh, with a border view, and they are all uh, available for us to see it in different types of views. The first of view is progress. So it goes, what is not started? These are the tasks that are not started. What is in progress and what's completed? So it's a Kanban board um, with a kind of a, each task is a, is a, has its own note. Um, and then you can drag and drop. So you can say, well, this deploy is now in progress. And you can literally, you know, have a very nice visual to play with your um, uh, Kanban board in a way to move it from not started and progress and completed. You can also assign it to buckets. So you go, okay, well, let's, let's for example, call this bucket, these are the business activities. Uh, business, whatever. Um, and then technical. Uh, and so on, and you go, this is, I don't know, marketing or whatever the, the task might be. Um, and then you go, well, this is technical, this is technical, this is marketing, and you can have then the, the whole, you know, buckets um, um, 
uh, kind of ex experience instead of just the um, the progress experience. And you go all this back to the progress and switch between different CAM boards. But the thing is, they are integrated. So the dates are coming from the timeline, i.e. if your, your one of your tasks has been delayed, that will update your grid, that will update your board, and so on. So it is a fully integrated three interfaces into one place. Um, and as you can see here, the, the, the interface is quite slick. It's very easy to interact with. It's all on the web. It is optimized on, on, on mobile devices, be it a phone or a tablet. And again, it's built on the CDS. So let me show you that back end um, CDS, common data service that we talked about. So once I go to the data and I go, show me my entities, this is the back end. This is the ability then to have the data from Project Online, from Project for the Web, and non Microsoft applications into one place. So this is the, um, you know, the, the, the Power Platform. And what I'm going to here is what's so-called the Common Data Service. So I click on the entities. One of the entities will be called Project. Um, and as I create projects via Project Online or Project for the Web, or SAP or whatever other, or JIRA, if you have a JIRA integration, the list of projects will have them all, well, assuming that I've integrated to, uh, um, to this CDS. So if I go to Project, uh, I I think that's the wrong environment, but let me just double check. Data. No, that's the wrong environment. Um, I think this will be the right environment. So that new project should be available for us there. The uh, CR implementation. Oh, sorry, let's go all on that. Project, 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 there we go. If I look at the data, um, I don't know what's happening here, but oh, sorry, that's why. Uh, all projects, that's what I want. No, still not playing. Uh, sorry for that. Um, I can't remember really which environment that that is connected to, um, but. I think the, the actual the entity is the wrong entity, um, but it, it will show you if I go project again, because there are a few um, project entities in the system that we are playing with. Uh, no, I think I need to go back here and search again. Give me one second. If this doesn't work, I'll just move on. But I just wanted to show you that as you create them, they will be available in uh, the system so that is no that's custom that's a problem right so we don't want the custom ones uh, that's what we want that should be the one if i go to the data there we go so see our implementation as you can see is he right so we just created by the web it's available for us here and any other project so building a new office is actually not a new, the new project for the web project or I don't know um, uh, other projects. They are not coming just from the projects for the web. They're, they're coming from different sources, including uh, Project Online, SAP, and the others. Now, how do we do that? How do we make this common data service get data from Project Online or SAP or Jira? I'll show you just two quickly: Project Online and Jira, for example. So I go connections. And all I do is I go, I'm going to create a new connection and this connection is going to be to Project Online. So I literally go and say, look, connected to Project Online. And then I then go create a connection to Project Online. Type in the URL, your username and password. I'm not going to go through the process because I already have one to show you. Uh, so if I go data flows, there should be one for Project Online. And then you schedule, as, as you can, created the connection, you schedule the synchronization of the data, i.e. The, uh, the import of the data from Project Online into the CDS. It could be every hour, it could be half an hour, it could, it could be real time. Um, you go based through the API, it goes whatever change happens, bring it here. It could be based on a, um, uh, a function, as in when a publish has happened or a save or whatever. Uh, you can have uh, all of those triggers to do the synchronization. Uh, it's taking a bit of time here. I don't know why, but usually it does not. Uh, but you will have a data flow here coming from Project Online. Um, if you want to create a new connection while well, this is loading, I might open this a new tab. 
and show you how I, you know, create another connection, for example, to Jira. So you go, I'm going to create a new connection. Uh, this time it's going to be to non-Microsoft, it's going to be to Jira, and you do the same process and so on. Um, so the idea here then, the, the, the list that we started with, the list of projects with all the attributes, and then you'd have to do the, obviously the, the field mapping that would be required to go, okay, what's the project ID from Jira? What's the start date? Maybe it's called start or start or beginning or whatever the field might be in other applications. You just have to do the mapping. So as you bring the data from those external applications, Microsoft or not Microsoft, you are doing the right mapping and keeping this list, a master list of all the applications. Now, whether you want to send back some information back to these applications or not, uh, um, it's, 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 uh, it's independent from bringing the data here into this one system. The other thing is, the, as I talked about, is the application, the apps. So if you want to develop an app and you go, well, look, I want this app to, for example, to um, have a, a, um, uh, a way to submit to new issues or risks against the project, or in fact, um, create a new concept. Um, so, you know, before we get into the project approval, we will create a new concepts for uh, our ideas to be considered by the business. Um, in that one power platform and you can then have it available for different users and those users can then use that application so i'll show you just a quick app that is used for concepts uh, this app will be available for any user uh, on their mobile or non-mobile devices but as you can see here i'm using the power platform i'm creating a new idea putting an idea name description short description save it and can submit it and so on. You give me an interface to show how many accepted ideas, how many approved ideas, how many implemented ideas I have in my um, kind of area of ideas. But as you can see, it's a completely configurable, customizable interface uh, using the Power Platform to do a function. And, and by the way, this is a just very simple example of the functions that we can perform via the Power uh, Platform. Um, you can have much more complex ideas all the way to if you are a you know if you are a project online user, uh, you would see that it can replace uh, the entire you know project online experience using an app, uh, and that app can be available on the web. So you can have you know projects here. You click on a certain project. So I'll, I'll go with uh, maybe I'll go with this one, build a new office, and then if you remember, I mean people who are familiar with um, project online, the tabs on the left, this one, the tabs on the right, but the you know, summary information, the tasks, which is you know equivalent to uh, the schedule in, in, in project online, uh, the team, the resource allocation, the documents. You can you know imagine how this can go, risks, issues, and however you want to go. Basically, replace project online via the SharePoint interface to a complete Power Platform uh, interface that will give you both the integration capability and the um, the, the complete control over the user interface um, uh, uh, in terms of not only just users on the project management side of the uh, of the platform or the application, but also uh, field resources who might need to submit a certain uh, field inspection, for example. I'll, I'll, I'll show you another app where we, we have a side diary, for example, um, not that one, that one. Uh, this is for one of our clients, so they do a site inspection against their projects, uh, and they go, okay, I'm gonna go to this site, and again, this is available on a tablet or a phone. They you know, put in a name, a date, a site manager, what project, so this list of projects coming from the CDS, whether the project was created by, it was actually Oracle Finance, uh, so either Oracle Project Online, uh, or obviously the, the the CDS platform or project for the web, they you know pick a project, they do their inspection, tell us what's the ship, what's the term, what's, what's the temperature, maybe take a photo of the site, uh, into the GIS information, um, and that's it. And they submit it, and it goes to the CDS uh, in the platform, reporting up to the Power BI, and then you start utilizing it for you know reporting in in any way or shape that you want. Uh, this is one of the client as well, and they have for example a portfolio map. So that goes, okay, what was the last site inspections? You can hover over on the project in terms of the location and, you know, colors will, will, will show you whether the last site inspection was good or not and so on. But uh, the idea is just, a, again, another example of how the Power Platform can help uh, in, in, in expanding the application to more than the traditional project managers uh, on-site, off-site, and really customize the user interface to their own 
uh, case of usage uh, in, in order to enable a more integrated uh, one source of truth. Um, so that's really in terms of the demonstration that I had uh, for you today. Um, I might open up for questions. So if anyone has a question uh, that you would like to ask, just put a, um, I guess, a, a question button and then uh, we, will, uh, we will be happy to answer if we could. All right, um, give it another few minutes. All right, what license required for to get project for the web? Okay, so the the licensing now have changed. So again, if people are familiar with um, licensing for Microsoft Project, now it has changed. So instead of usually called essential, uh, professional, premium, now it's called uh, P1, P3, and P5. So you can start with this new project for the web that, you know, this project thing uh, that I showed you today with a P1 license. And P1 license is roughly in Australia $10 per user per month. If you want to use both project for the web and project online, you would need to go P3. And that's um, around roughly $45 per user per month. And then there's a third one called P5. And that includes project for the web. And project online. Sorry, by the way, I forgot to mention the middle one, P3, uh, does include also project for the desktop. So maybe I should go back to my diagram. So if you want this by itself, you go with P1. For project for the web is available on a P1 project license, and that's roughly $10 per user per month. If you want project for the web, project online, and project desktop, you start with P3. And P3 is 40, roughly $45 per user per month. And there's a P5, will give you again the three, but more functionality in Project Online. Uh, and that is roughly, um, I believe, $70 per user per month. So these are the licensing for the new project model. If you just Google um, project Microsoft Project Licensing, or even put Microsoft Project P1 or P3 licensing, uh, they are all available and published on the net. But again, the licensing now is P1, P3, and P5. Now, if you were to start utilizing Power Apps, uh, as in develop apps for users to do certain things, you, you need to pay an additional fee for the Power Platform. Now, whether it's only for the apps, and that depends, there are a number of plans for the Power Apps, uh, but it starts from $10 per user per month, uh, and Power BI to consume the reports, um, but they will be additional uh, license is required if you are going to have it, um, you have Power Apps developed or some rules to integrate data from uh, Microsoft or another non-Microsoft applications, or in fact start using Power BI for reporting perspective. These are um, different types of licenses, additional licenses. All right, um, any other questions? All right, well, if there are no further questions, um, I would like to thank everyone for attending. And uh, if you are interested in learning more, or in fact, you are, are considering moving from Project Online to the Power Platform, or implementing a project portfolio management, uh, we'll be pleased to talk to you. Um, obviously, um, our, my contact details, my email address, and or, uh, the, uh, the 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 email address that you received updates from are available for you. Just drop us a, an email and let us know uh, if you are interested in, in our uh, product. Um, we call PMO365. There's a trial version available, by the way, is um, uh, all available on our website. So if you visit the website pmo365.com.au.com um, uh, or .com.au um, and then hit on trial. Uh, we can organize a trial of PMO365 available for uh, on the Power Platform um, and take it from there.
Thanks everyone for attending and hope you have a, a good Monday and a, a good week week ahead and uh, looking forward to hearing to hearing back from you. Cheers.